In this episode, I had a fun conversation with Harsh from Etherbit, an online marketplace in India which sells all the popular crypto hardware wallets like Trezor, Ledger, and other popular crypto merchandise. To get a sunny Bitcoin special discount, you can use the coupon code in the show notes below. In today's conversation, we discussed the pain in trying to buy these hardware wallets and importing them in India and how Etherbit solves this problem, how Etherbit is able to sell these devices cheaper than their international prices, their crypto hardware manufacturing plants, which are the most popular hardware wallets they sell and the hardware wallets that we both use and recommend and lots more. I really enjoyed this conversation with Harsh and I hope you do too. Hi, Arsh. Thanks for coming on Sunny Bitcoin. Hey, hi, Sunny. I'm happy to be here. So I think just before we started recording, we were talking about the block log, which you noticed. And uh, of course, it's absolutely relevant to what you do. So we're going to talk about that, that do you sell the block log? Because this took a long, long time for me to come. And also, I noticed you have a very interesting poster painting behind you. Do you want to uh, explain what do you have behind you? Yeah, it's it's the office. Uh, it's a character by, uh, you know, this uh, Indian artist. So I bought it online. Yeah, it's it's the office. And you, yeah. Oh, so, okay. Sorry. I don't know for some reason. In, I thought it's the Winkle was brothers in the middle or something like that. That's the reason I thought something to do with Bitcoin. But <laughs> no, no, no. It's the Michael and Jim and etc. It's the yes, office. yes, yes. Absolutely. Well, the, I, honestly, the Bitcoin world is no less comic uh, and there are many comic characters in our community as well. So <laughs> yeah, and it's filled with memes every day. Like, you know, we see memes every day. Yeah, a- absolutely. That's the fun. It's entertainment along with money. Harsh, tell us a little bit about your background and how you started Etherbit. Uh, so it's interesting. So I started with Etherbit in 2017. Uh, I started it with a Google form. So in the end, earlier days, it was just a plain Google form. MVP, I absolute users, MVP. Hey. <laughs> I just I was asking users to hey uh, fill your phone number like mobile number and shipping address. I would call them like you know personally hey like you want to buy this thing and etc. And in the earlier days like you know, actually I could not figure out the taxes and etc. So I sold like initial batch. At a so actually so, before that just exp- let's uh-huh. explain what Etherbit does because so that the users uh, the audience has a context. So what do you sell? Uh-huh. Okay, so we sell like, you know, all sorts of hardware wallets, anything related to cryptocurrency, we sell it in India. And the reason we do it is because again, in, uh, when I started to, uh, when I bought it for myself uh, from France, I, I saw that, you know, it's, it's a long and tedious process to get it from customs. And second of all, you know, I need to pay import duty and, uh, you know, taxes, which is, you know, otherwise, if you just buy it in India, it would be cheaper. So it's similar to this, if you see iPhones, so, you know, you can see uh, they are retailing at $999 in US. But when you try to import them yourself, it will be more expensive than you just buy it on Amazon. So basically, so you buy the, all sorts of Bitcoin, crypto, hardware wallets like Trezor, Ledger, yeah. uh, and all of that. It becomes a very simple experience for users to buy. I can totally relate to that experience. Before I came to know about Etherbit, to buy uh, like Trezor, uh, you know, hardware wallets was a bit of a suspense. How much time it's going to take? What's the custom duty going to be like? Um, and, you know, if you buy a lot of them, then literally it gets stuck in the customs. Uh, and now, of course, I suggest Etherbit for everybody in India. So that's that's fantastic. Uh, how did you, how did the idea come about? You were talking about it. How did it, what, what happened? What's the story? Yeah, so, uh, you know, I, 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 I held some Bitcoin in 2017 and uh, I wanted to just secure them in a wallet. And at the time I was looking at Ledger, Trezor, they were alternatives. So I ordered both of them. And then Ledger came after two weeks, like, you know, after arriving, after the, arriving in India, it got cleared after two weeks. So it Trezor took more than a month and I had to pay, I had to pay like, you know, heavy duty and taxes. So it like, it costed me around like 20,000 per device. And I was like very shocked and I thought like, hey, if this is the experience that everyone is getting for the first time when they buy the device, it should not be like this because it's con- it, completely, it completely discourages the user from using this thing because these are not the luxury, this is the necessity for crypto, right? So I wrote an email to Ledger and then explained them, hey, I want to do this thing. It's a crazy idea. They said, fine, go ahead and do it. Uh, here's the uh, all the information you need and that's where, that's how we started. And initial days, I did not did not know that you know, it will sell something like this. So I just had a Google form and say, hey, I'm just collectively buying something for you guys. If you are interested, let's chip in and let's do it together. And then like a lot of people started to buy and then I thought, okay, let's create a website then. So that's how it all started. That's amazing, right? Like there are so many opportunities. If you face a problem, then it itself becomes an opportunity. What's your background before Etherbit? So I am a computer engineer. 
So I just before that I graduated from Skadit's a uh, college in Surat, and like I have done computer engineering bachelor's, and that's that's all in my background. Before that, like you know, I had a small internship with Harvard Cyber Law uh, uh, via Google Summer of Code, and then like I joined a small startup in Bangalore just to learn about you know all sorts of marketing things, and then like front end, back end, all sort of experience that I can gather. Just know that you know how a small company can survive with the very fewer resources that they have. So it helped me a lot, like, you know, set my mindset around startup industry and then how to, like, you know, start something from scratch. Just for the audience, if you can hear birds chirping, that's coming from Harsh's place. It's not background yeah. music that <laughs> I've added to this podcast. It <laughs> adds a nice little yeah. vibe to this podcast, actually. Very peaceful. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it is. It is. It's like a Zen moment that we are living in. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I, absolutely. Maybe it could become the signature background, uh, you know, music for all future episodes. Who knows? And where are you based out of? Uh, I'm currently in Surat, Gujarat. Okay. All right. It's yeah. amazing that some of the earliest crypto startups have come out of uh, Gujarat. Gujarat, yeah. Polygon, uh, Matic, yeah. Zeppe as well. Zeppe, I mean, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And before Zeppe, actually, so, literally the first one or two companies also came out of uh, Gujarat. So it's, it's, yeah, wow, it's a, it's a hub. Uh, another very unique thing about Etherbit is that it's the first crypto startup that I've come across. Or No, actually, it's the first startup period in which the co-founders are siblings. Tell us uh, more about this unique combination. <laughs> yeah, so actually my sister was interested in this crypto thing, but because she is not from the tech background, she want, like she has an experience in the, in the like, you know, management and sort of thing. While like, you know, those things like, you know, bore me a lot, like in you know, managing stuff and etc. So I like focused on the tech part while she focused on the managing of everything from top to bottom. So you so, focus on creating like, the Google form and then she ran everything else. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. It's an app description of it. So yeah, that's that's how things started. And then we like even nowadays, like, you know, we are designing our own crypto tools, not the wallets, but the crypto tools. So like, if you know that CoinKite is selling this, uh, you know, crypto steel backup plates, right? And even they retail for like crazy amount in India. So which yeah, is just for the audience. Stuff. Uh, what Harsh is talking Sorry. about is like when whenever you have a hardware wallet, you have some seed words that you have to take care. Normally, you type it, you you kind of write it on a piece of paper. Uh, but then there are like these steel, not devices, but steel things with steel alphabets, um, where you can actually uh, write those seed words uh, in steel, not on paper. So even in some, you know, like an incident of a natural disaster, like a fire or something, it's more, um, uh, it, it's just more safe than on a piece of paper, even if you put it in a vault or a fireproof vault. So yeah, go ahead, Harsh. Yeah, that's that's exactly what it does. So uh, again, like we looked into the basics of it, it's very easy to manufacture and etc. But if you import it from CoinCard, it takes again duty, taxes, all sort of things that we are doing so far. And the, the main goal of Etherbit right now is to, you know, reduce the pricing to the bare minimum so that, you know, more people can start using it. Because, like, we believe that if more people start using it, they will realize the more, like, an you know, actual value of the devices. And it's, it's better for them. It's a good thing if you, you know, start using devices in the earlier journey of crypto. It's, it becomes a habit. So it's, it's like it stays forever. And same thing with this uh, crypto steel. So we designed it, then we started manufacturing it. We released the samples and etc. And it's going good now. And it retails what I can understand is fourteen hundred, and with economy of scale, we are just going to sell it for in the future below thousand. That's so, amazing! I did not know yeah. that you have. Oh, so you are the first crypto hardware company, true hardware company out of uh, India. App. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Of course, India is a price sensitive market, and there are lots, lot more users, but at much lower. Um, mm -hmm. you know, price points, uh, even in terms of maybe mm -hmm. the value that they hold in crypto, even with books we see, and even with actually every online service has a special pricing for India. And and it's fantastic. Have you have you considered, I mean, a lot of these wallets, like the Trezor hardware wallet is also open source. Have you gone that, like, are those in your plans? Is, is that a sunny Bitcoin special announcement? <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm holding this information like in actually hostage right now because I don't want to release it too early. We are definitely working on that. It's like a small product and like we are prototyping it based on the treasure. It's it's open source. It's completely, uh, you know, everyone free, uh, is free to use it. So we are like trying to assemble, manufacture it in India. Like it would, it, it does not require like, you know, specific software to run because treasure has done an, in, an incredible job creating the software. It's so all we're doing is right now just trying to replicate some of it, try to manufacture it in India, like at a very, very, very cheap rate so that, you know, users can start using it. So yeah, that's, that's something happening. I mean, 
that yeah. is a sunny Maybe bitcoin special announcement this is my second episode where i have a sunny bitcoin special announcement the maybe i have a hat trick in the next one so app that that yeah. is fantastic <laughs> yeah. you I can you can take this part out from the podcast for now <laughs> I think yeah. we just let it be, and you know it doesn't have that big a reach right now. So ah, we let just definitely. let this slide in. Right? <laughs> that, that, that works for me. That's amazing. And what what are some numbers? How many users have bought uh, hardware wallets uh, so far on Etherbit? If you're comfortable to share, what's the growth rate? It's in like it's definitely in thousands, like every month. Uh, the growth rate it's like you know it's every month. Uh, it's it's actually uh, you know not doubling the sales, but it's it's actually going at a smooth pace right now. and we are like expanding on the uh, operational side so we have just uh, you know created our presence in the karnataka in delhi in mumbai we are also looking on the east side so we are like you know we will start to sell our programs so you know we will become the distributors and then we'll start uh, spreading the wallets however the the way this industry is working right now the profit margins they are not as big as when you import an iphone right so the way the usual electronics work they have like very fat margin For the distributors, then they like shrink the ball, like shrink the margin till they reach the reseller and then retailer. So we won't have like you know multiple steps like that, but we just want to introduce at least one step so that you know we can, you know, uh, encourage more businesses to get into this one, this space. Yeah, Th- that's amazing. I mean, maybe we have an Etherbit experience store in the future, right? <laughs> yeah, we tried in the past. We tried in the past, but it did not work out because you know uh, the authorities they are suspicious that we are selling Bitcoin. Oh, the so reason I, was the reason was regulation and authority is not a business model or something like that. No, That's it's, it's crazy. Business model. So uh, it's just like simply if if you see ether being written somewhere, it has ether. Yeah. Ether. So are you guys selling Bitcoin or ether in 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 this store, like a walk-in store? Oh my god. And then God, we had a lot crazy. of confusion, so we just had to shut it down. It, it wasn't a good idea at the, in the beginning. So we started we started doing this in twenty eighteen, end of twenty eighteen, and just when the fall started. So right. Uh, Yeah, we we may try that in the future, but at least not in the short term. Yeah. Yeah, I think the environment definitely has changed, and I think the amount, the the difference in perception every year. If you think about it, like if you think mm-hmm. about twenty seventeen when you started, and right now there's a massive change. Mm-hmm. So if you just you know kind of uh, take that further in a couple of years, nobody would question such sort of ridiculous things that you are trying to have a store in which you are selling hardware wallets. The best way for users to protect uh, their crypto, and you are mm-hmm. in some way not. Kind of, you're not able to do it, and not because you don't have a business model, but because of the perception that is really tragic. But um, hopefully, yeah. short-lived. Which are the most popular hardware wallets that users are buying uh, on Etherbit? It's a treasure one, uh, definitely. So, like, I think we have two categories here, similar with the smartphone world. There is this budget wallets, and then second one are like expensive ones. So, budget in the budget category, I think treasure one is doing really great right now. Uh, and very lately, I think Binance's uh, SafePal they have entered the market like very recently with Etherbit, and they are also yeah. I saw that listed. Incredible. I didn't know what wallet is that. That's that's yeah. by Binance. Yeah, it's it's backed by Binance. So okay, yeah, it's it's uh, they are like you know more they are like you know lot of integrations with Binance. So like users, I I think in in Indian users they prefer Binance integration a lot. I guess so that's the thing. Otherwise, I think. The Trezor and Ledger they are like gold standard for uh, you know India that's what we have seen and in the I think more expensive category Ledger and Access doing well. Yeah. Do you have a personal preference? I use Ledger and Access. Okay, I like I, I'm a Trezor one guy. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, it's like why do you simple, prefer them? Uh, have you used theory. all of them? Of course, you've used all of them, right? What, what do you think yeah, are the used... advantages and disadvantages between all of these three four ones? I think uh, give the audience like personal, what should they buy. I think again. So Ledger Nano X, it's like my personal preference. It's similar, you know, when you when you go to a store and when you buy a car, it's BMW, Audi, both do the same thing. It's just again your personal taste, what you want to pick with. So I think uh, Ledger Nano X it has Bluetooth. So like you know, whenever I'm traveling or whenever I'm outside home, and if I want to do a transaction, I can do it quickly with uh, the Bluetooth one, right? And I have and an using iPhone, your phone. So, yeah, you you can do it with your phone. Uh, Nano X it has Bluetooth connect. Uh, while I try that, like, and that works on Android and, and iPhone both. Yeah. Oh, that's I didn't know it, that. It, it, that's it's, interesting. It's similar. So, like, if you if you have to pay a vendor, like you know, in crypto, like I can just do it from my phone. And right now, we have a multi sig setup that we use it in Slack. Like, you know, pe- multiple people, uh, people approve it, and then it happens. But again, we use Ledger. I use Ledger and X, while my sister she is a Trezor model T guy. And what do you use for the multi sig wallet? 
it has a like i have created a very custom solution for that uh, it is a very old code that i have written and i have not touched it so far like it's been like i think one and a half years but interesting is that so a many, uh, is that like, a, a public release of that a sunny bitcoin special announcement we can do that i think it's it's a nice way so organizations can like you know sign things from slack so wow. it's, it's something we can do but again like it requires some additional uh, you know i think audits and stuff like that because i have created just for my purpose and it's closed source so probably it has a lot of bugs but uh, yeah probably we can think about that and like at the end of the day like we want to make everything as open as possible similar with the pricing and etc so if you go to the website visit the website even the pricing has the detailed breakdown that why we are charging this one it's not like we are That's just putting amazing. everything from the pocket yeah it's it's all transparent on the website talk about transparency in this industry you know i mean it's like uh, that's amazing okay okay so so that's one of the advantages and uh, anything else do you prefer like the user interface and stuff i don't know for some reason i just maybe it's just something i've become comfortable with that i've used trezor from the beginning and i have my, my one of my videos on youtube which is how to a creator wallet using trezor is always very popular it's like a five part series on how to create wallets and again the same intent right i want more and more mm. people to use hardware wallets and um, i just kind of recommend that how's the binance hardware wallet what is it called backed hardware wallet what's it what, no, it's, it's called, called safepal safe it's safepal yeah, yeah. Uh, it has what do you think about that and, uh, i have not used the wallet like you know personally but you know team they have like kind of tested it so that users we can answer users questions right um it it's not open source it's like very new oh so my god i, I think over there only my... yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah exactly yeah. I, even with the ledger like you know they have not open sourced everything but because they are actually around that's true long time. yeah i was going to ask you that are you comfortable with that i mean with that kind of mindset that you bring to uh, this industry or maybe you keep uh, like a small amount of funds in your uh, ledger or you use it as your main wallet as well so ledger is like mainly for the transactions that i do like you know like okay you know, then it's so fine it right? not, it's like you know in the exchange you can call it as a bomb or you know hot wallet while the cold wallet it's like a treasure model t as uh, the sister uses so Uh, but again, like also the, you so the, use, so your preferred wallet for the your really cold cold storage is the Trezor, uh, yeah, whether yeah. the Model T or it's the a Trezor, yeah. So okay. that's what, that's what I said. Like, so if you are doing if if I'm doing any on the go transactions, like when I don't have laptop around, you know, uh, Ledger Nano X is the only option I have. Uh, otherwise, you what know, do like, you do? What, what are that kind of transactions that you do on the go? <laughs> I've never done uh, any on the go transactions. That's interesting. So, for instance, you know, if we are paying coin card. right so they don't yeah. accept you know uh, credit card yet from the india or even the bank transfer so we have to do it by then other than that there are other other players in the uh, in the european re- uh, region where we are, we are ordering any samples from them they only accept crypto so far and uh, this transactions they keep on happen like in every week every other week and it depends on the location and etc but yeah, like right. they are it's it's uh, yeah for on the go it's like manuex is good otherwise if you want to keep on holding it i mean you know open source transparency talk so no some fantastic information for the audience i think there is a universal kind of agreement that the trezor is a great kind of secure uh, wallet and on the go the ledger could be considered what about uh, the block lock that's not listed on the website that's difficult to uh, get access to from coin kite <laughs> after after jack uh, after twitter jack dorsey and everybody exactly. having it in the background it's a must right <laughs> It's it's a must. Uh, so uh, you know we do sell coin, uh, you know this block clubs. It's just like we have not listed that on the front screen because like they don't have a high demand in India so far. But again, like if you look at the uh, numbers, like it has crazy long wait list. So even like you know uh, one of our shipment, it's still not released from coin card yet. It's we are still waiting, hoping that they do it like probably by the end of next month. But yeah, it's like it has a crazy demand outside. It's it's for sure. Yeah, it's for sure. Yeah, mine took about two months, and I cannot tell you how excited I was when it came. So, just for the audience, the block lock. I mean, people listening on the podcast cannot watch it, but on YouTube, there is a, a coin card has this product called the block lock, which you can configure it. It's got a like a standard display, but you can configure it to show uh, the Bitcoin block number or the Ethereum block no- a number, or the current Bitcoin price, and just connects with your Wi-Fi, and it, it's just become. Like you cannot call yourself a a Bitcoiner or a Bitcoin. crypto nerd without having one of these in your background. I mean, it's just you have. It's one of yeah. those things that you have to do. It's it's the religion, and that's like the you know thing that you have to have on the wall or on the on your table. That, that that's interesting. I didn't know that you sell that because I never saw that. All the Bitcoin books are sold out. Why on your website you uh, listed all of them, but all sold out. We just had an experiment, so we like you know like you know got a very small number of books. Just thinking, okay, we will just you know give give it away to the people and etc. 
we sent an email and like you know next day it was all sold out and uh, after that you know the uh, i think the publication that we spoke to they did not have enough quantities in india so we had to import an etc so we just thought let's wait till they resupply like you know restock everything and then we'll start selling it again so like, it, like again like i think people really want to get into the uh, you know books of bitcoin like they really want to understand how things work and etc or at least just as a you know just as a you know nice bookshelf if they want to create with this one they are like very much interested in that but again like we just had a very small ex- uh, experiment within it was successful so like we'll, we'll definitely resupply we stock it yeah the bitcoin standard is another books which i recommend in all my like introductory kind of sessions i think it's a fantastic book but i was surprised because the bitcoin standard is available only in hard cover internationally and it's i think mm-hmm. like $30 uh, or 20 30 dollars but you've listed it at 1000 rupees and seems like a paperback so how did you manage that uh, so I think it's not paperback again, like the pricing. So a lot of things that we introduced for the first time, uh, we kind of like, you know, it's an experiment to test the, uh, test the audience, test the waters, and we do not necessarily want to make any profit on that. So we just, you know, list it as the customer demand and supply, and then we see if it makes sense for us to continue doing this. So yeah. again, like, you know, it, initial batch got sold out so again like the moment we now do it like commercially we're like you know just the pricing and etc and then we'll start selling it so yeah that's all that's all actually what we do with the safepal wallet as well so we like sold it for a very very uh you know very unbelievable uh, unbelievable price because we thought we don't have any prior data for this wallet we don't know what how it how, how, how to go and then yeah once things were set then we just uh had the price to the normal no, you're right. Actually, so, um, I mean, one of the things that I wanted to ask you is like, why should somebody buy from Etherbit compared directly to Trezor and Ledger? And it's obvious, it's 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 actually surprising. Your price is actually lower than even the listed prices on these websites, um, uh, you know. So I think besides uh, the import duty and all of that hassle that you have to go through, the delivery times are far shorter. In fact, I know some of my family members just bought it from you. I should have actually asked you it's already discounted so what more discount will you give right (laughs) so yeah i mean there are multiple benefits how do you 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 have it cheaper simply because you can buy it in bulk and you're like a dealer right and then you have low margins yeah so i think uh, it's all about perception so if you buy a phone here in india you don't you do not buy it directly from the manufacturer right you buy it from the retailer like if you want to buy an iphone you will go to an i value store or like something that is selling the iphone right they are like authorized retailer the seller they write it on the front page right similarly with the hardware wallet uh, i think market it's it's going to be the same because going forward like you know, it will be it will like it makes more sense to just get it locally because first of all these devices are like cryptographically secure so again let's say if there is a problem in supply chain the moment you connect it with the computer it's going to like it, it's it will be revealed that something's wrong right Second of all, if the supplier is like, you know, well vetted, like, you know, if the community knows that what they're doing and it's been in the game so far, right? So it's it kind of build like, you know, sort of trust from the, with the buyer and then supplier. Again, like we always say that, you know, do not trust, always verify. So we like, you know, send an email to all the customers that, hey, now thank you for your purchase. This is how you can verify everything. Step by step. I saw that link. So I saw yeah. that, verify, which is like yeah. the packing material, the hologram stickers. And to the latest yeah. version so that they can check it for themselves. Yes, exactly. So uh, that's what we are also aiming to do. And again, like all the testimonial that we get for the, from the community, like if you see the uh, in the voice page of Etherbit, like we have listed everything the community says about us, like even positive, negative, whatever it is. Because we want to be very transparent in this case that, hey, we are not just the random people who are just selling it. We are in for the long game and we are definitely here to stay. You know, it's interesting in the crypto industry or the Bitcoin industry, you can clearly see the companies which want to follow the ethos above biz, like money is the second principle. It becomes a byproduct, but you are into Bitcoin because of these principles and you then adopt it in the business and you want the people to adopt it. So you're also training them just like Trezor. I mean, Trezor has created an open source product. You might end up using it, but they don't care about that. But then you are open sourcing so many aspects of your business, like the transparent pricing. You want the users to verify uh, the product. You you want the reviews to be, uh, you know, transparent. It's just, it's heartwarming that how this, you know, the, at least a small segment, at least a core segment of the industry uh, thinks about that. And you can just, you, you know, separate the people who are kind of business minded than the people who are the Bitcoin minded, you know, and I love that um, about your responses. How, how big is the team right now? So right now we are 13, you know, majority of people, like I think we have five in support. The, the reason I think we have a bigger support team is, you know, the, like we get a lot of questions on the wallets, like, because 
I think 50% of the audience right now, the users, they are from the tired gay to city. And they have like you know, a lot of questions on the wallet. Hey, how do I use this? How do I set this up? Hey, uh, like what can I do with this wallet? Like where is my Bitcoin? So like we get like, we, we, we respond to these questions like all day. And like I have created a very small program that spools all the email and then it gives me the hot words that, hey, last month, you know, there were like, you know, seven words that were repeated a lot of time. People usually ask about, is it hackable? Like, is it secure, transparent, and et cetera. So like, we just keep on checking on exactly how people are feeling about the flow. But yeah, that's that's how it is. Uh, but yeah, we are hurting people right now. You know, I, I have created content like this, again, honestly, just to save myself, because there are so many friends who know that I'm into this. And so every, I, I've sat down in somebody's hotel room at 12 midnight, setting up their Trezor wallet, and that guy's watching TV. And I'm like, you know, before the next price rally comes, I need to create this video. This is how I honestly I started Sunny Bitcoin's YouTube channel. It was to pro- save my time and energy. Um, I, I, and I think, I don't know, it would be great uh, to kind of discuss with you because I'm passionate about people having hardware wallets and moving their Bitcoin to, you know, hardware wallets and to kind of create this content because still, I mean, I have these videos and I know people watch it and, you know, create their wallets, but there are glitches. Like sometimes like a Trezor wallet, you know, they don't know how the recovery process works. They don't know what an advanced recovery is. They don't know how to update when those warning comes. Do you have your seed with you when you have to update your Trezor? And for a user, he doesn't know whether the Bitcoin is in the Trezor. So uh, would love to, I think we, besides, of course, selling the product, I think it's almost your job to make sure that the information on how to use these wallets is also out there. And I think mm-hmm. I would, I, I will talk to you offline, whether we could create some content uh, to make it e- more and more easy for users to do that. I literally, this is really um, a funny incident. I once I woke up uh, in the morning and I had like some 20 missed calls from one of my friends. And um, oh. I, I just called him up. I thought there's an emergency. And I, I called him up and he's like, you know what, I just wanted to talk to you for one minute because I haven't slept the whole night. Uh, and um, he transferred some Bitcoin from his exchange wallet into his Trezor. And he's like, I just wanted to ask you, can I disconnect the Trezor? Because it's not yet confirmed. It's an unconfirmed uh-huh. transaction, right? And maybe the block uh, is like, he's waiting for three, six confirmations. It took six, eight hours that day. And I'm like, oh my God, buddy, just like close it, go to sleep. The Bitcoin is not in your wallet. But I, I honestly, it, it's painful, the the torture, the mental torture this guy went through the whole night, not sleeping, keeping his laptop on so that the laptop doesn't fall asleep, like, you know, and that's what I feel like this is the, this is the need for education still as a, I think these hardware wallets have made storing Bitcoin a lot more simple, but for somebody who still come for the first time, he still feel, feels it's really painful and a bit of a learning curve. So, yeah. yeah that's actually um, true. Uh- I mean, like, you know, uh, so there was this incident, I think, just last week when a user actually, uh, you know, the device stopped working for some reason, like, uh, or for moisture, etc. And they are like, I lost my Bitcoin. And then I think we just sent one email to them. and Hey, do you have those words with you? They're like, yeah, I do have. So that's your Bitcoin. It's not inside the wallet. Like, it's the private key that all matters. So, like, you know, the team had a long call with them, explain them everything, help them set up again. And they had the, again, uh, the whole access to it. But again, I think, yeah, we, we do think that the education part is like still lacks in India. We still need to focus more on the education, less on the trading strategy. That's, that's yeah. my, uh, you know, take on this. Yeah. yeah, actually, honestly, exchanges are big and they are doing all the education for buying and selling and all. Uh, but um, custody is a massive part. And I think it's a, it's a big scope. I mean, a couple of uh, custody companies uh, internationally are doing amazing. Like BitGo has gone really big and stuff. So there is uh, absolutely a need. And I mean, Trezor it's in itself is also, but Trezor, Ledger have become extremely big companies, uh, you know. Yeah. Um, I, have so I, mention we... the, I have to mention uh, Liminal. Like they are just like, uh, yeah, you know, I was... doing, mine is doing great. So I wanted, when you spoke about multi-sig wallet, I wanted to talk about my ex for the audience, my ex co-founder Mahin. But of course, a podcast episode is coming with him and I want that to be a sunny Bitcoin special okay. announcement before he kills me. That why have you mentioned this on another podcast? Let's not talk about it. Okay. Let's <laughs> Absolutely. These are my two. That's, I mean, that's you. So you are the kind of the first. I'm really excited to get like these first custody wallet companies on the podcast and, you know, kind of uh, have an audience for that. So I'm super excited yeah. to have him as well. Sorry, mind for spoiling this one. <laughs> <laughs> no, we haven't really spoken much. So it's, it's fine. And the website okay. is empty. Like there's nothing on the website. So, so I think yeah. it's all good for now. And you recently had a great article uh, by your story on you. How did mm-hmm. that happen? 
So I think they wanted to do a small piece on the on each of it. Like they are, I think, uh, now covering a lot of cryptocurrency related startups. And uh, because we don't have a token, we are not going in that direction. We are just doing simple work around the community. So we just said, fine, let's have a call and let's see how it goes. And then it ended up in a small like piece on the company and what we do. Yeah, it's fantastic. I, I again, I've said this in the you know in my past episodes. There are platforms which highlight you know U.S. companies uh, a lot, and I feel like there should be platforms which highlight you know Asian and Indian uh, startups. So I'm happy that Indian media started picking it up, and uh, you know that's the um, that's the mission with this podcast as well. Any funding plans? Are those uh, really? inter- articles a precursor to funding? Is that another Sunny Bitcoin special announcement coming up? So we are not actually looking for it, but for the manufacturing part, like that will become a like you know kind of uh, you know need. So you need we'll working see, capital. All, you need capital investment for that. Exactly. Yeah. So we are first of all like you know focusing on the POC. Once it's done, then it gives us like you know confidence to pitch it to the investors and see exactly how it goes. But like so far, we are not looking into the again the funding part or the money part. We are just so excited about the creation. So that that is crazy right now. That's the engineer talking. Maybe with your sister, the conversation could be slightly different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that's exactly how it is. So uh, she is not into the tech part, but she is into the other part. She likes you actually. She likes to talk to the people, like exactly see what they are facing and what's the problem they are facing. She creates an own knowledge with our base articles. She then trains the uh, people who are actually uh, you know uh, replying to the customers and etc. So that's how the whole process starts. Yeah. But yeah, I'm, I'm more like, you know, I'm interested on the uh, the tech part. That's Clearly. <laughs> and so on the tech part, are you a Bitcoiner or are you in uh, altcoins also? Uh, I am majorly in Bitcoin. I do have Ethereum. I do have Ethereum. That's, I think, yeah, it's it's a very polarizing conversation. Actually, it's like, a, I, I don't believe in like, you know, one and zeros right now. It can have both of them because I also work with liquidity, right? So we are an exchange, we are a, uh, you know p2p exchange company the thing is that you know i think the in order the, the, the popularity that bitcoin got it is also partly because of the ethereum and the exchange happens and etc so it also requires the other asset that which you will exchange with the bitcoin right so that's that's what i think and um, but i i i'm not a very i i have both of them so that's what i say right uh, i think um for me this question is important because i want the audience to get different views of course they know that i'm a bitcoiner most of them who follow me but i also want them to know what majority of my audience or at least over a period of time kind of get a feel of how other people in the crypto space are kind of respond uh, to this question i think it, it is polarizing it's my you know rather than coffee with current it's bitcoin with sunny bitcoin moment it's that, that's terrible i thought it in my head it sounded way cooler <laughs> uh, than when i said it out aloud um before we wrap up uh, harsh how can people find etherbit uh, they can just Google Etherbit first. Again, there is this like it's a very clear name, unique name. So you can just visit Etherbit.in and uh, like uh, how 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 else can they find us? Like, do you have any other thing in mind? Like, uh, no, it's just a, yeah, just the Twitter. You just have to see, oh, that's so the question. You just the answer is you just say your Twitter handle and your website. That's it. Uh, okay, yeah, sorry. <laughs> that's so, yeah, it's simple. Again, like Twitter handle and then uh, website. So Twitter handle is Etherbit HQ and then the website is Etherbit.in. Yeah. Yeah, or a train ticket to uh, Surat. Uh, Surat, yeah, that's that's, <laughs> the, that's the way. Yeah, <laughs> that's not the that that was not the meaning of the question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I actually get it. But uh, yeah, and a lot of people actually they they come to Surat and they ask, hey, uh, how do I buy this one? Like, I want it from you. Again, the inventory is spread across like seven regions, so we don't have everything in Surat available. But yeah, it's it's how it is. Harsh, Etherbit is, uh, again, you know, is like a place that I always uh, suggest for anybody in India to buy. Uh, if they want to buy hardware wallets, you're the company that I recommend. And I, and I know before you existed, the entire process was like super painful. And I'm just like so happy that you're supporting the Indian crypto community. And especially with the conversation, it's like with principles and such an important way by making it easier for Indian users to buy hardware wallets and finally have an easier way to have a safe custody of their Bitcoin and crypto. If you like this video podcast, please like and subscribe. Hush, thank you for doing this. And thanks for coming on Sunny Bitcoin. Thanks, Sunny. Yeah, it was nice talking to you, man.